Now that I have had some time with the patch, for me the prime feature update added to Star Citizen Alpha 3.10 wasn't even on the roadmap. It's the update to mining, the Grey Cat Rock, or the Remote Ore Collector. This is the first ground vehicle put in the game that is usable, profitable, and a hell of a lot of fun, but it doesn't come without flaws. So what is it? It's a compact, open-air cab ground vehicle that finds itself fitting perfectly in between hand mining and ship mining to bring this type of gameplay to even more players. It's small enough to fit in ships like the Cutlass and Freelancer, these can fit at least two, and obviously can be carried in larger ships like the Carrick, for example. So what's so great about it? It's just copy-paste mining, right? Well, in a sense, that's all it is, but it's not at the same time. I feel it's really unique and different to always flying in the ship like with the Prospect or a Mole. It creates a really nice breakup where you're always moving and never bored. So why am I less bored? Well, there's only three types of gems that can be mined by the rock. Hadonite, Dolivine, and Aphrodite. Personally, I have yet to see Aphrodite, but the game files say it's located on the moons, and also, feel free to take a look at this diagram. Link will be in the description. Members of my community created it to help those aspiring miners out there looking to hit it big. So given you don't have to sift through many different minerals like you do with ship mining, you can easily spot what you're looking for, get to the surface, pull out the rock, and start collecting. What's also different is while you have the additional step of landing and taking out the vehicle, you don't have to break these types of minerals down with the laser. It's only one break and then you're extracting. So you're constantly on the move and on the lookout for more and more nodes to break up. All right, so how profitable is it? It's up there with some of the better haulers in terms of cargo, and I think it's better than the prospector and mole right now in terms of hourly because of that ease of the search and lack of multiple breaks. I have a decent number of runs under my belt at this point, and certain moons you can get just under 200,000 Alpha UEC an hour. The buggy holds just under an SDU, sitting at 0.8 SCU, and right now each unit of the most valuable gems, Hadonite, is valued at 275 per. So 220,000 per cargo hold of the Grey Cat Rock. This thing is a workhorse. So where's the best place to mine? There is one clear-cut choice. It is the moon Ariel around Hurston. Now, before you go there, you're gonna wanna head down to Lorville and pick up some protective armor. It's called the Pembroke Armor. It will protect you for the very high temperatures of Ariel that exceed 270 degrees Celsius, which is actually higher than the armor is rated for, but the armor will protect you and give you enough time to mine up whatever you need before you have to head back into the ship to cool off. There are other decent locations to go to, but the reason Ariel is so good is because it's low gravity, so flying is easy. There are very few prospector mineables. And lastly, and most importantly, there is only Hadonite on this moon. So anytime you find a diamond when you scan, you know it's Hadonite, you can head down, break it up, and bring it in to your ROC. All right, so we've said a lot of positive things. Now, what are its flaws? Well, you obviously need another ship to transport it. This is certainly a flaw. And there's an easy workaround for this problem. Just rent a Cutlass. It's about 28,000 per day, and the earnings that you'll make with the ROC far exceed the costs of renting the ship. So while the actual buggy can scan and find minerals on its own, the current way the game disperses its mineables, it could take hours to find enough, maybe a day to fill just one load. But with the ship, you can fill up in just over an hour. Another flaw is its open cockpit. You're exposed to the elements, and some of these moons are either really hot or really cold right now. You can only survive for minutes at a time at the moment unless you're using the weatherproof armor sold at Lorville and Port Tressler. But to be perfectly honest, I think this is actually a nice touch as well as a flaw. You feel much more part of the game when there are more things happening to your character, causing you to have to make choices and upgrades and decisions. The last flaw for me is it's currently only available for real money purchase on the website. So it's either $50 war bond, which is new money introduced into the project, or $55 with store credit. And also there's a package that comes with a cutlass for either 140 or 150. So, you know, obviously not having it in game and being able to earn it via an Aurora or something like that is quite disappointing. So in conclusion, while I'm certainly ready for Star Citizen to shift their focus away from mining and move on to new avenues for gameplay, 
This has been a welcome addition to the mining family and I have enjoyed taking it out and using it because it's really fun to play with. So let me know, did you guys end up picking one of these up? How have your experiences been? Leave a comment below and make sure to hit the subscribe button because this was just a short look at the rock, but I do plan on doing much more mining content in the future, more in-depth mining content. Lastly, feel free to like the video and share it with anyone you feel could use it and I will see you guys next time.